steam tables. Water is of vital importance to all living things and is thus one of the most widely studied substances in science and engineering. Literally mountains of data have been collected on water. One such collection of data that is frequently referred to when the enthalpy or internal energy of water is required is the so-called steam table. Steam tables can be found in many scientific and academic texts in the form of tabulated data collected during numerous experimental studies. First-year chemical engineering students from universities the world over often refer to the steam tables found in the back of the book by Felder and Rousseau or in the tables published by Rogers and Mayhew. Steam tables usually contain data on the specific volume or just inverse of density of liquid water and its vapour, the specific internal energy, as well as the specific enthalpy, both at various temperatures and pressures. The data in a steam table are grouped according to the various regions in a water phase diagram which represent the different physical states of water. For instance, it contains data on saturated water, that is, the points on the red line shown in the accompanying phase diagram, which constitute a pair of values, boiling temperature, vapor pressure. Steam tables also contain data on superheated water, the regions shaded in orange in the accompanying phase diagram. Likewise, they contain data on subcooled water, the region shaded in green, and even data on the ice saturated vapor equilibrium line. Let's consider points on the vapor liquid equilibrium line. The first row in the table shown here contains data for the triple point of water and ends with data for the critical point in its last row. Note that many intermediate rows have been left out in order to fit the table on screen. Now, we already know that the first two columns contain pairs of points that correspond to the equilibrium saturation line. And the columns containing data about the specific internal energy are for saturated liquid water and saturated water vapor, respectively. The last three columns to the right contain specific enthalpies. The first for saturated liquid water and the last for saturated water vapor. The column in between these two, with heading evaporation, contains the difference between the third and first columns and is known conventionally as the specific enthalpy of vaporization or the latent heat of vaporization. Let's first look at what happens in the specific volume column as we move down the saturated vapor table. This is equivalent to, to increasing temperature along the vapor liquid equilibrium line, i.e. moving along this line from the triple to the critical point. We notice that the specific volumes approach each other in value as we go down the table until becoming equal at the critical point. This is because liquid water and water vapor are one and the same thing at this point. The situation is similar when it comes to the enthalpy of vaporization. It decreases steadily as we go down the table until becoming zero at the critical point. In effect, the energy needed to vaporize liquid water decreases as we move along the vapor liquid equilibrium line to the critical point. Once there, it literally costs no energy to change one state into the other because they are in fact just the same state. We now take a closer look at the columns containing specific enthalpies or internal energies. As there is no delta attached to the symbols representing these quantities in their respective column headings, we might be fooled into thinking that those columns really contain absolute specific internal energies or enthalpies. However, in reality, they are referred to a reference state and therefore constitute differences and not absolute quantities. If you are still unfamiliar with the concept of reference state at this stage, it is recommended that you see the short video lesson in this series titled Reference States in Energy Balances. Should the table not specify a reference state anywhere, not even in a footnote, it is usually because the reference state is self-evident. You need only look for a zero value in the columns containing enthalpies or internal energies. Thus, the reference state of the accompanying table is substance, water, phase, liquid, temperature, 0.01 degrees Celsius, and pressure, 0.00611 bar. This choice of pressure and temperature might seem slightly awkward, since 0.01 degrees C and 0.00611 bar aren't round numbers. 
but they have been chosen as such because these particular values of temperature and pressure cor correspond to the triple point of water. We now practice reading from the steam tables by looking up the enthalpies of physical states of water corresponding to the saturated region. For example, the enthalpy of liquid water at 8 degrees C and 0.01072 bar may be read directly from the accompanying table. It is just 33.6 kilojoules per kilogram. This value represents the change in specific enthalpy in going from the reference state, the box to the left, to the final state, the box to the right. It's now very clear that enthalpy cannot be an absolute value, but is instead referred to the reference state specified here. The specific enthalpy of water vapor may also be read directly from the steam table. And note that the, difference, the reference state remains unchanged. It is still the triple point of water. For instance, the enthalpy of water vapor at 14 degrees C and 0.01597 bar is 2,527.2 kilojoules per kilogram. Since the enthalpy data in the table are all referred to the same reference state, it is very easy to calculate the change in specific enthalpy between state 1 and 2. By simply subtracting the specific enthalpy of state 1 from that of state 2, we immediately obtain the required enthalpy change. We now need to mention a very important point in connection with the above discussion. If the data used in a calculation comes from the same steam table, then knowing what the particular reference state is becomes unnecessary because it won't be used directly. If, on the other hand, enthalpy data from the steam tables are used and in addition are based on different reference states, it will become indispensable to know exactly just what the reference state of each table is since it's not possible to use multiple reference states in the same problem. This can lead to very serious mistakes.